Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? What is this? This is something completely new, completely different, and, as you can see, completely damn sophisticated. (laughs) And what we're going to do today, obviously, is something a little bit different, and that's okay, because um, the application for this is very strong, and the relevance for this, especially right now, is really high. Um, I've known about the guys at GGD get good drums <clears throat> for quite a while. Uh, it's the same, a lot of the same guys that are in the band. I think it's uh prophecy if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, and you know, I don't want to mess that up. So I'm just going to look that up just to be a hundred percent sure. Um, and no, that's not the band. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's um, um, it's a heavy metal band. And um, they've also uh, taken the time to uh, record and use some of the most killer drum samples in the game. And that has comprised the drum libraries that they've made available. And they've named that Get Good Drums. And if you go to the Native Instruments website uh, currently... There's some promotions they're running for the Modern Massive Collection, the Matt Halpern Collection, and the Invasion Collection. Those are the three drum libraries they have in contact. And there's uh, some samples and uh, various, there's a ton of YouTube videos and stuff online that talk about what I'm going to talk about today. So there's de- this is definitely not new or, um, you know, a foreign concept. This is something that's actually very simple. But in my journey as a musician and a finger drummer, finger drummer um you know it's been like it's been a long journey and i can sit here and talk to you and look at you but i can also do a simple drum pattern something like what you hear right now um and i can lighten it up you know to play with a little bit of dynamic range i can Start leaning into it, make it a little bit heavier. And, you know, it's it's been a long journey, but essentially I've picked up this habit of just needing to play um, music to sort of a live drummer. And I've not always had access to a live drummer. So I've always looked to programs like this, like Contact or like different finger drumming programs to allow myself the ability to lay down drum grooves that are unique and new and something that, of course, if I wanted to, I could come back in and actually at the MIDI level make adjustments or corrections or things like that, but then eventually at the audio level be able to break down into uh, stems or just usable audio files that could then be processed by a mix engineer and, you know, worked up into an actual song. So uh, it's, it's really, really cool. And what we're going to talk about today is how I use things like get good drums or studio drummer or, um, you know, drum lab or some of these other drum programs. And eventually like the goal, if you're going to record those things is you want to separate those sounds into all of their own tracks and so that's what i've done here is i've set up all these audio tracks in pro tools as a matter of outputs from this single 
instrument channel, which is some baller gangster engine. I mean, when you're recording something like this, you feel like an engineer. You feel like a badass. You should because it takes a little bit of time and effort and energy to set up. And um, I used to not record drums this way. I used to actually in a very bonehead way because I didn't have as much access or time uh, to watch videos on the internet and do you know my due diligence to really learn how to use these programs uh, until recently. And um, I used to literally record each of these, like the kick, the sub, the snare, the toms. You know what I mean? I'd record all these things one by one by one. It would take me hours to do a drum groove. You know what I mean? And now you can work up a drum groove like now, right now. You know, in, in less than five minutes. And you can separate them where your kick, your kick sub, your snare top and bottom, your toms. All those things are separated, hi-hats. And then, of course, all your room tones and overheads and all those sorts of things. So like a real, like a real mixer or like a real recording engineer would set this up in a studio essentially. And you can hand this off to a mixer or hand this off to whatever and record it in a freaking legit way. So, um, first off, I wouldn't be able to make this sound that badass. I could have all the talent in the world, but the drums would not sound this cool without the library itself. So the library itself, the guys that get good drums are, you know, geniuses, uh, you know, uh, real, real front, front runners, front line guys that are really grinding it out, recording some of the best drum samples and articulations in the world and allowing us, the player, um, you know, to really go to town with all these different drum articulations for the snare. Those are, that's just the snare tones, all those yellow tones, the toms. All the articulations for the hi-hat. Listen to all these closed hat articulations. That's just like a click. Like if you let your foot off, if you let your foot off the hi-hat for a split second, that's a sound. Makes sense. It's the lightest one. And then as you go down the chain, it opens up a little bit more and a little bit more each time. So there's tons of just closed hi-hat articulations. Those are all considered closed. And then the open hi-hats over here. You know, each of themselves a little bit more and a little bit more. You know, so those you use in conjunction with the closed. And if you want to sort of lean into closed hi-hats a little bit more, which players kind of tend to do as they hit the kick drum or they hit the snare, then... You know, it sounds a little more genuine. It sounds like it's got a heartbeat, like a rhythm to it, you know? And that's t that's what I tend to go for. You know what I mean? It's not what everyone tends to go for, but I tend to go for realism or what someone can actually play or what someone actually would play for a certain song. So if you in a in a certain context or in a certain song, if you need to lighten it up, you need to play the keyboard softer. You need to not play it as heavy. You need to... And then if it's a really starting to heavy out or get like, you know, Zeppelin, then you need to lean into it. And that's when you, you know, play the keys a little bit harder. That's a technique thing. That's like you work on that, you know, and not everybody has that or has that right away. And that's fine. You just have to keep grinding at it and keep working at it and doing shit like this. This is what you do. Practice. So... Essentially, um, you know, all these different articulations for the symbols, all of these things. And this is just the one kit. And so I can switch between Lead Samurai and, say, default kit at 100% turbo. It's a totally different drum kit. Now, what does that mean? So if you look at the individual drum samples, this is actually different in a completely different you know, kit. So in this case, the Q drum kit, and it's, um, you know, steel, if you're familiar with Q's, uh, types of drums, uh, in the real world, uh, these are made out of steel. And so they sound tighter. They don't sound like woody, you know, 
little bit different of a sound. You know, uh, but nice and tight, really. And, um, you know, I'm going a little hot on the snare top, it looks like, so I could come down on the outputs for those things. So, I'll, uh, you know, you can change the sound of the kit. Um, very easily, you know, and I like this Led Samurai kit because it reminds me of like a Led Zeppelin or a, a kind of older, more classic uh, sound. So sometimes it takes a second for the entire kit to load. So if it sounds a little funky, uh, you just got to give it that time to finish loading all those samples into the memory. Now let's talk about outputs for a second. When you first load up Contact, or when I first loaded up Contact, it's got single output, stereo output, and that's cool. Like I used to record that way, you know, it's a pain in the butt though. If you wanna record it like a gangster, you wanna record it like an engineer, you're gonna break it all down and you're gonna record it once, not record it 11 times, cause that's the number of tracks I have. I wanna record it once and be done, and then go have some dinner. Yeah, you know what I mean? So essentially the way you set that up inside of a studio is you mic up each thing individually, okay? So you set some microphones up on the kick. You may have a sub. And then there's going to be some overhead mics, which will catch some of the kick. There's going to be some room mics, possibly close up, far away. That will also catch some of the kick. Same with the snare, toms, cymbals. So what I have, and this is what you have in any typical, you know, studio situation, <clears throat> is you have all of these things separated to their own channel. So I have the kick on the first channel, and I have the kick sub on the second channel. And the way that I did this is you show the outputs inside of contact. So on this thing next to, um, you know, just the menu option here next to the gear, you hit outputs. And then what I did is I hit add for outputs. So I determined the number of outputs I was going to need. In my case, I needed 11 for what I was going to set up. And so I hit the plus sign here for outputs and I changed that. To 11, number of channels 2, sound card, I want it to consecutively start at the first output chain and then just number them sequentially, so I just hit number 1 for the very first one, ascending output assignment, so that will set all the outputs sequentially in an ascending order from this starting position, okay, delete existing channels before creating new ones, that makes sense. So you don't uh, muck things up. Make this your default configuration. So I want to make that my default configuration. And I can mess with it in standalone mode or do whatever I need to do. But in a DAW mode, when I want to record, this is what I want. So I've already had, I already have that set up here. So I'm not going to, I'm actually cancel this. But when you okay that, what that results in is all these separate outputs. Now what you then have to do is in Pro Tools, you have to set those outputs. I can't do that while I'm recording, but I took some screenshots that we can look at right now uh, where I can kind of show you this process. So one, two, three, four, five. So like I said first, you're setting, setting up all your output channels. I got quantity of 11 in my case. Set my host output, starting position. That results in the multiple outputs like we see here. Then what you have to do in order for Pro Tools or any program to then recognize the new, the new normal, the new setting, you have to restart. So just be familiar with that process. Be okay with it. Restart. Stop your Pro Tools. Start your, stop your logic, whatever you're setting up. Stop it. Save your work. Restart it. And then in Pro Tools, I pull up each track. So I pull up the input channel for each track, say kick sub for starters, and then I select plug in contact and then stereo output. That's it. Boom, and it's done.
So I just, I did them all sequentially. So contact three, four, five. If you look at how I have it set up right now for this session, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're all assigned. And I have the kick going to number one. I have the kick sub going to number two. So that's the sub each time. I have the snare top and snare bottom going to three and four. Toms going to five. Hi-hats going to number six. Ride going to number seven. And then the overheads are just capturing everything. Just capturing everything. So check this out when I start playing something. Okay, you get a feel for how that sounds. Check this out when I hit mute on the room. Like you immediately get a feel for how much additional realism or additional tone and just having that additional room reverberation has. You know what I mean? So the guys at Get Good Drums have, you know, taken this time to set up these microphones and record all these articulations of all these sounds so that you can not only hear them all, but then output them all to their own channels. So I have the LDC or large diaphragm condenser on its own channel, overhead, overhead, soft diaphragm condenser, that's on its own channel, room close, room far, all on their own channels. So very cool stuff, and it's very simple to set up, as you can see, and then very simple to start then just dropping in some grooves. I don't know. I've got this groove that I recorded for Since I've Been Loving You, and I don't know if I'll record over it if I just try to drop it in here, but you can just see what happens if it starts playing it or if it starts recording over it. Yep. So obviously I think I can add to it if I want to, but this is a groove that I recorded the other day for obviously since I've been loving you. And just beautifully broken down onto their own channels, you know, just from a recording perspective. Like, as an engineer, you just you sit back and make sure all the levels are good, make tweaks as needed. It's a little sloppy, let's be real. But, I mean, obviously you can come in here at the at the MIDI level and then make your edits, you know what I mean? But I like somewhat human performances. I like there to be some swing and a little bit of, like, errors. That's human nature. But then you set it up to record professionally, you know? And every song has to be in time. So if it sucks, if your performance sucks do it again. That's my, that's my thing. You know what I mean? Like if you are recording, then set it up to record professionally, but do it over and over like they used to, you know, like that's how you get better. That's how you get a better performance out of it. And you can sit here and you can make it robotic. You can fix all the notes and stuff. But in my view, I like those kind of human errors and look at that. I mean, that's fairly spot on in a lot of, in a lot of ways. And if it's not, I can do it another five to ten times, and then it'll be spot on, you know? So, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. And 
don't want to let's see how that needs to needs to compress a little bit but it's not and that's fine but and yeah I think that's the end of that groove but Cool stuff, and um, obviously you wanna you wanna mute whatever microphone you have recording a vocal while you're finger drumming because you're gonna capture a lot of uh, room noise of you pounding on a keyboard like this. And it sounds like shit. That sound right there. So, um, but you mute that. You capture everything from contact in multiple tracks. So let me practice what I preach. dead weather and some zeppelin and what else i mean you know techniques you pick them up from wherever and you practice and practice and practice um but this kind of shit just like recording this kind of stuff should be easy and it is so on that note until next time